Weapons. A Stellaris Weapons tier list. Let's start with the crowd favorite. Neutron Launcher deals a lot of damage and have insane range. Devastate fools from afar and bypass point defense and shields. Easily the best weapon in Stellaris. SS tier, a must have on every ship. Wait a minute, who the hell wrote this? Again, excuse me. Neutron launchers are by far one of the worst weapons in Stellaris. It has such low damage, even with the Torp's special ability, it's practically useless against anything below cruisers. But unlike torpedoes, this thing is unstoppable and has a lot of range. Don't be fooled though, as the reload time is absolutely massive. So if your enemy for some reason has a billion PD, it's time to switch to this absolutely cursed weapon. Unless they're using shields, in which you're just screwed anyway. But that's unlikely due to the insane prevalence of armor nowadays. C tier, yeah, not great, but hey, at least it's not useless. Lasers, the generic starting energy weapon. They don't have anything special aside from the bonus damage to armor and half damage to shields. They even deal bonus damage to hull. B tier, not a bad choice due to the current armor meta, especially the black magic cruiser. Also, not having any minimum range on large slots makes this extremely flexible. Plasma launchers, basically lasers that suck even more against shields, used mainly to bust heavily armored targets like star bases and capital ships. B tier, roughly the same as lasers, but the simple fact that it's large slots having minimum range makes this slightly less flexible in combat, but the increased bonus damage to armor and hull makes up for it. Railguns, the generic starting kinetic weapon, bonus damage to shields and half damage to armor. C tier, shields just suck now, not to mention it being completely eclipsed by kinetic artillery for long range and auto cannons for short range, it's just straight up inferior. Not a good pick, but not bad nonetheless. Autocannons. Basically railguns, but better. Well, not really. Autocannons high damage against shields doesn't really matter much when they're out of range. C tier. Not bad, but the terrible range makes you very, very vulnerable to kiting ships. Not to mention when combined with lasers or plasma, autocannons get outranged, which would result in the plasma or lasers landing on the shields first, dealing no damage and effectively putting you at a disadvantage. Even when nowadays first strikes aren't as important, it can still give you the minor edge needed to win battles. So only use this when camping hyperlanes as the shadow windup mechanic means that auto cannons will 100% fire first every single time, which I've already explained in my other video. Disruptors bypasses shields and armor but has no range. It used to be the worst weapon in the entire game, but guess what? Now it's the best one instead. If you've watched my video on this weapon, it just beats everything. Not only do you immediately reduce enemies, fire rate, it also triggers enemy disengagement prematurely. Both of these things combined with cruisers is simply a match made in heaven. As they are so insanely overpowered that pretty much everyone use it. Even when the enemy has triple armor hardening, which if you didn't know, is actually the only way to properly counter this, it doesn't even mean they'll win. It only increases their odds of winning ever so slightly. Paradox, please fix. Strike crafts, a weapon that I have insulted so much that it actually got but this thing has no first strike and take time to start doing actual damage. Also, it can't miss. This means that they pretty much slaughter corvettes, destroyers, and even frigates like they weren't even there. Although, still be careful of frigates as they have the highest cloak strength in the entire game. Combined with torpedoes can wipe out your carriers in an instant if they get a nasty ambush. B tier, combined with the carrier computer and triple afterburners mean that this thing will eternally run away while launching strike crafts. Kinetic artilleries. Dealing double damage to shields is extremely powerful. Although, in this meta where armor is dominant, this thing's useless. Well, most of the time, as this can be used as a way to combo with plasma launchers later on. Since this has longer range, meaning they will shoot first and likely one-shot multiple ship shields, rendering them vulnerable to your plasmas, ensuring for a smooth and devastating start to a battle. B tier, not the best alone, but if combined Combined with weapons that shred armor can be really powerful, as this weapon's existence alone will render all shields in a battle null and void. Giga Cannons, the Giga Chad of all weapons. Well, that was its previous nickname anyway. Now it's a hot stinking pile of garbage. Like Paradox murdered this weapon, it should be a crime. Nobody really runs shields nowadays, which means most of this weapon's firepower is wasted. Do note that this weapon can only be used on battleships. In other words, 
words, very vulnerable to frigates and having no access to the picket computer. B tier. Such an extreme fall from grace for this weapon can only be compared to the neutron launcher, as it used to be absurdly overpowered in a time where shields were in the meta. Unfortunately, those times have passed. Tachyon lances. Pretty much the giga cannons, but worse in. Oh, wrong script. That was the alt tier list. Pretty much the giga cannons, but better in every way. It has the same range, deals insane damage to armor and hull, but has half damage to shields. Wait, you see the problem here? Yes, Tachyon lances always fire first in a fleet, and that also means it always hits the enemy shields first. Effectively, this weapon's first strike is just half. It's what I would have said if I was a noob. What happens in reality is that it breaks through the one shield barrier and absolutely ravages all of the enemy armor. Nobody has shields anyway, so it practically isn't an issue at all. A tier. The only thing dragging this down from S tier is the fact that battleships are garbage now. So using this weapon a lot will also mean increasing your vulnerability to torpedoes, especially cloaked ones. Oh, let's also not forget no tracking, no picket computer, yada yada yada, you know the drill. Perdition beams. The big brother of tachyon lances has the longest range, takes ages to reload, and one shots anything. The main thing is, this can only be put on titans and ion cannons. Also, you can only have one titan every 200 naval cap. How about ion cannons? They're hilarious. That's all I have to say. If you use a carrier computer using a titan, you can force an engagement at any position in a system, preventing them from ever running away. Unless cloaked, of course. Just pray this would actually target big ships, cause if not, this thing is practically an overglorified tachyon lance. Or even just a laser with bigger stats. Although, that's not much of a worry, since a titan's worth is its aura, not its weapons. B tier. Not bad, just not scalable. Arc emitters. As the big brother of disruptors, this would be better, right? No. no. This thing's garbage. The inherent need for battleships is a major issue. As disruptors cannot be put on large slots, means that the only way to make an arc emitter battleship that isn't garbage is to combine it with cloud lightning, which is just inferior to disruptors in every single way. Not to mention the actual rarity of cloud lightning is a major issue. So most of the time you won't have it and be stuck with a terrible ship that spreads its damage evenly, which again is a terrible idea. C tier. Even with all that said, it's still not a bad idea to use this because it has the same strength as disruptors. But unfortunately, battleships just suck. Oh right, I almost forgot about missiles. And yes, an ICBM is a tier 1 missile. Think about that for a second. Missiles, the normal kind. They're actually not bad. Their range got used up in the last rework, but they can be intercepted and also don't apply their damage instantly. Also, they can only be mounted on small slots, so bigger ships wouldn't even be able to use this. C tier, as long as you pay attention to how much PD the enemy has and switch out accordingly, this weapon is not bad as it has decent range while bypassing shields. Swarmer missiles. Wait, wait, wait. So they're literally just better missiles? More range and a whole lot more health. So much so that PD isn't even worth it against these as it takes an insane amount of them just to prevent a minor portion of the swarmers. If combined with the artillery computer and triple afterburners, this becomes absolutely terrifying. Especially on cruisers where you gain access to a whole lot of medium slots. You won't even need to turn around as this has no firing on nor minimum range. Just to put an idea on how broken swarmers are, they are, as of now, the only thing equal to disruptors in versatility and power in most, if not all, situations. S tier, its low alpha strike and tendency to stay in range will make it an easy target for ships specifically geared for shooting at long range, more specifically Tachyon Lance battleships. But then again, this just means there's only one real counter. This is still as terrifying as disruptors. And now we need to talk about torpedoes, the nightmare of all cruisers and battleships, which is basically every viable build in the entire game. Really, any ships larger than destroyers will die to this in close range, no questions asked. Well, unless they're carrying a ton of PD, as that's really the only way to win against them in close range. Even carriers, the mortal enemy of frigates, get absolutely butchered if jump scared in close range. But at the same time, carriers aren't the very thing that makes this weapon terrible if engaged in anything but close range. I would have said B tier here, but the introduction of cloaking and the fact that frigates have the highest cloak rating in the entire game, it makes me terrified at the prospect of cloaked frigates. Waiting 
and hunting, ready for their prey. You, A tier. What keeps this from S tier is the fact that you actually need to use a torpedo cruiser to even get close to anything, as frigates are simply too frail to even breach through the enemy carrier fire. Honestly, not a bad idea to use torpedo cruisers, but you would be sacrificing naval cap efficiency while making yourself vulnerable to torpedoes yourself. Ah, uh, choices, choices. Truly conflicting, isn't it? Now let's talk about some countermeasures. Flax, low damage and high tracking, specialized in taking down strike craft but terrible at everything else while normal point defenses are specialized in taking down missiles but also terrible at everything else they're both c tier it's what i would have said if i was an idiot i lied flag is worse because strike crafts have shields flags actually deal bonus damage to them but why not just use strike crafts that bypass those shields instead pd is c tier use them as a way to stop torpedoes and protect your capital ships while flag is in piss poor d class because the best way to counter strike crafts are also strike crafts. Ironic, I know. Just please, don't use them alone. They're countermeasures, not actual weapons. Wait, no, it's back. No, no! Now, the event weapons. Mining lasers. It's just a tier 3 laser. And yeah, that's it. It's not bad, just has a very niche use. Oh, and you can't fit them on large slots, so they're automatically knocked down a tier. Just for that. Maybe two, because it has awful damage as well. D tier. Getting them early by killing some mining drones is not a bad option, although late game becomes completely useless. Matter disintegrators, kill the unbidden, and get better lasers. If you don't die, that is. 10 less range, but slightly less- Hold up, this thing does bonus damage against bigger ships? What? A tier. So yeah, they're basically just better lasers in every single way. The minor range decrease is a small price to pay for salvation. Amoeba flagellas. Basically equivalent to level 3 strike crafts, and nothing. Yeah, I guess they do have lower tracking. I mean, your sensors and traditions can help with that, but yeah. C tier. They're pretty good as an early game weapon by killing bubbles and using their children as slaves for your eternally growing war machine. Energy siphons. Of course, after cutting bubbles dead family members will use their organs to drain shields. Terrible against armor and can only be put on small slots. E tier. Oh my god, it actually deals less damage than even level 1 rail guns. Bubbles got his revenge by making this weapon so ass that nobody would actually use it. He is safe for now. Null Void Beams does insane shield damage if you ignore its awful DPS and terrible damage against armor and hull. At least it has good range for its large slots. Oh, who am I kidding? It's just a bootleg level 3 railgun. D tier. After when the shields are down, this weapon's just dead weight. This is legit pointless once you get level 4 railguns. Actually, I lied again. This is E tier. Nobody, and I mean nobody uses shields nowadays. Swarm Strikers actually has slightly higher damage and stats on everything. Well, except no shields, slower speed, and slightly penetrating armor. B tier. Not terrible. You directly bypass shields and armor and just straight up deal damage to the enemy hull. The main problem is the significantly less speed and the fact that you can only gain these by killing a Pretherin crisis ship, which again is only usable once the crisis spawns and you haven't died from them yet. Scourge missiles. They're basically torpedoes that have triple the range, double the DPS, and fire four times more. This would be an automatic S tier, if not for the fact that the bonus damage is half and the projectile itself does not have any armor. Still, even with its weaknesses, this weapon is still terrifying, even more so when you use them on cruisers, with the artillery computer and triple afterburners. Is it A or S tier? I honestly have no idea. Let's just put this on A tier. Again, you need to first kill a Pretherin ship, which can just appear too late to be relevant as you'd already be knee deep in other weapons repeatedly by then. Cloud Lightning. To summarize, they're just bigger disruptors. Even after the rework, this thing still sucks. Its damage for a large slot weapon is absolutely pathetic. Even when compared to disruptors, this thing's only merit is its range. D tier. Not recommended to use, especially in combination with normal weapons. At the very least, combined with arc emitters, it's not bad. But doesn't help that you still need to find a void cloud in the first place. And now, the Archaeotech weapons. Let's start with the hilarious one. Ancient defensive web sling. 
partners. Okay, so what does this actually do? Anything special that makes it unique? Nope, garbage. Absolutely garbage. If you're feeling a little rich and wanna burn a few minor artifacts, this is the best way to do it. E tier, hilariously bad. There is literally no reason to use this. Ancient cavitation collapsers. What if you had level 4 lasers and want to spread your damage evenly? Then this is just for you. C tier, the very thing that makes lasers useful is the fact that they tear down armor so the small amounts of kinetics you have to take down the shields can start dealing damage to the enemy hull. When you suddenly spread out the damage to both hull and armor, leaving the kinetics to hit armor while only dealing mild damage to the enemy hull. Not to mention the heavy artifact cost with this weapon. Ancient macro batteries. Real good, but look at that. The large slots don't have any minimum range. SS tier, insane, except I lied again. You can't say that having such terrible accuracy is good. Like, why would you use this? Seriously, seriously, why? Why? The wiki says it can be used to decloak near enemies. And I got a great idea myself. How about you decloak slightly further away? It's cheaper and also more accurate. E tier, literally inferior in every possible way. Ancient saturator artillery. Ah, uh, yes. Overpriced giga cannons. And no, that's not a joke. It literally has the exact same stats. Like, what the fu- The only real notable difference being the extreme damage against shields. And a minor tickle for the hull while being completely limp against armor like just use giga cannons they're better because at least they don't get annihilated by any smidget of armor c tier literally only useful against full shield ships which just don't exist oh wait those energy people i guess it has a use fighting them ancient ruination glares basically just perdition beams that have double the damage and fire rate but with half the range you would think that these are basically just better perdition beams Beams, but that is not the case. Perdition beams in a Titan serve as a way to make the combat computer move away from the battle, minimizing the chances of the Titan itself from being destroyed. As the bigger the ship, the higher the targeting priority in enemy weapon systems. It's very crucial in keeping the Titan alive, and by extension, the aura. By using the Ruination Glares, you will ironically increase the chances of your Titans dying. So do not use them on Titans. But what about Ion Cannons? If you combine this with a target uplink computer, you can cover the Ruination Glare subpar range and make some terrifying bastion systems where nothing can get through. C tier, unlike Perdition Beams, these aren't included in the Titan Space package. You actually have to research the weapon itself. And even then, it's only useful for immobile and inflexible star bases and maybe orbital rings if you're into that. Ancient Driller Drones. Okay, so what if you had strike crafts that bypass armor? Yes, you heard that right. This thing does not care about armor, but in exchange, it cannot bypass shields. If combined with kinetic artillery, can be one of the most terrifying ships in the entire game, due to the fact that shields will get one shot by the artillery while your drillers shred the enemy hull. And unlike swarm strikers, these things are just as fast as strike crafts, not to mention the very low artifact cost compared to the damage output. Like seriously, the other archaeotechs are so expensive that you can only put them on a handful of fleets before completing running out of artifacts. A tier can only be described as the hard counter to the current armor meta. And the best part, it's very hard to counter. Really only having flak or other strike crafts as its main opposition. Actually, the main reason why this isn't S tier is the fact that unlike normal weapons, strike craft variants cannot be buffed by any weapon edicts. Drillers have this problem even more as they die horribly to normal strike crafts due to them dealing half damage to enemy craft shields while they in turn bypass the driller shields and annihilate them. And now, it is time to talk about the super weapon. Missiles that fire every single day and bypasses armor and shields. I present to you the ancient nano missile cloud launchers. Now, this doesn't sound too bad until you realize this is a maxed out disruptor with double the range. What's even more insane is it even deals bonus damage to hull. This in of itself is absolutely insane. Combined with Archeo engineers, 
first this thing can be crowned as the true god king of all weapons. However, the main drawback is the heavy cost in minor artifacts, which are impossible to increase in any meaningful way, preventing you from ever fielding these in sufficient amounts to be useful. Unless you become the crisis, sacrifice and kill all who oppose you, and you shall access the menacing corvette. Why is this so special? Well, you see, nothing costs minor relics. Put every architect component you can, and of course, the god king of all weapons. And look at the price. No matter what you add, the cost would be the exact same. With this arcane knowledge, you can rampage across the galaxy until there is nothing left to stop you. And by the end game, you have so many repeatables that even if the enemy were to fully kit themselves with advanced hardening, they will only be prolonging their own suffering as their feeble flashbacks get annihilated through all the ablative shielding they have devised. Nobody can stop you, menacing destroyers, menacing cruisers, star eaters, and even the reality engine itself all will be lost. SS Deer, the new and official God King of all weapons in Stellaris. And now, thank you Ally of West, Kenji, and all the others on Patreon. It helps a lot and you'll gain access to a super secret Discord server and a 7 day early access to videos like this one. You can even share the early access link with your friends. See you all soon.